Happy Thursday, everybody. I pray all is well. My name is Michael Gibson, and I'm talking about why I go to church. I draw inspiration from many different things. And this morning, I was listening to a couple of my internet friends. I never met these people talk about a situation that happened in their family. Hey, Altavis, and I just wanted to talk about one of the reasons why I go to church is because I'm human and I and I hurt too. Because I go to church, I know that God is a mind regulator. But just because God is a mind regulator, it doesn't it doesn't take away the fact that I am governed by my five senses. It doesn't take away from the fact that if I lost something, I am going to hurt the same way that everyone else is um, subject to hurting. And the reason why I bring up, I hurt too, because when God saves you, God saves your spirit. He saves your spirit. So what you are doing is recognizing that your spirit was disconnected from light you were in darkness, you were not in the knowledge of the truth, and now you have come to the knowledge of the truth. However, the word says there is no good thing in this flesh, and that the flesh is always going to battle against the spirit, and the spirit is always going to battle against the flesh. The Bible also says to present your body a living sacrifice, and it says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So God saves your spirit, but you still have to deal with the human side of who we are. You still have to deal with the emotions that you're going to be faced with when challenges, situations come. And the reason why I go to church and the reason why I stay with God is because I'm not ashamed of the pain. So this may be a little different why I go to church than normal ones because I'm going to talk about something that doesn't always get spoken upon by people that go to church. We confuse saying that I love God. We confuse with having a prayer life. We confuse being on the worship team. We confuse being an usher. We confuse people holding church offices with them being okay. Many people that are in the church are not okay. They are trying to praise their way through. They are trying to faith their way through. They are trying to just hold on to some semblance of hope. But it is not always because everything is going perfect. So the reason why I said that this is going to be a little different why I go to church is because I hurt like anybody else and everybody else. So there are many people that are facing mental battles, but they think that they should face them in silence. We are destroyed as a body of people because we suffer in silence. We isolate ourselves from the people that can help us. We isolate ourselves from expressing our true feelings because we think that we gotta be like a storefront where everything is perfect in the window. Everything is perfect in the window. We are not mannequins. We are people that have emotions. We are people that go through highs and lows. We are people that are faced with all different types of adversities. So I go to church because of the fact that I know I don't have all the answers, but I know someone that is the answer. I know when I lost my child, when I, when I lost my child, the first place I went to was church. And... A week later, I was serving in ministry. I was playing the Congos. I was still opening up service. I was still doing all those things because I knew I needed a, a distraction. I knew I needed to have a positive distraction. I knew that I needed to get my mind off of that situation. And the best place for me to go was a place of peace, a place of comfort. So when I got done playing the Congos, when I got done opening the service, I was left at home with my thought and I had to deal with those emotions. I was alone by myself 
and I didn't open up, I didn't talk about it, and I went into a real dark place where I began to ask questions saying, God, how could you allow this thing to happen to me? How could you allow me to suffer this loss? And what happens is when you try to deal with your problems on your own and you don't open up and you don't get into a safe environment, your mind will play tricks on you. God saves your spirit, but you got to renew your mind. The reason why I keep saying you have to remove, renew your mind because the battleground for the enemy is your mind. And your mind will play tricks on you because there are so many things that will trigger you. So I will get up Sunday after Sunday and I will get up and leave the service. I will get up and play those drums and I will go home and cry. I will go home and cry because emotionally I kept asking God why are you keep allowing all of these things to happen in this world? Why is all of this calamity happening in this world? But what we must understand is that this world is controlled by the human beings that are in this world that are influenced by the external forces that we don't see. And if your mind is not in the right place, and if you're not seeking the right type of counsel, your mind can take you to places and get you to do things that you never thought that you would ever do. The spiritual world and the influence that they are after to position you to do things that you don't want to do. So I go to church because there was a point when I questioned God and God gave me an answer and I was unhappy with the answer. So I left church for a season. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to hear another positive message. I didn't want to hear any of that stuff. I didn't want to hear somebody saying that, you know, to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. I didn't want to hear somebody tell me to faith my way through it. I didn't want to hear somebody tell me that, you know, there was no pain that God can't heal. I didn't want to hear none of that stuff because none of that stuff was tangible to me. None of that stuff was real to me because I was going through a real life loss. I was going through a real life hurt, real life hurt, not a hurt that would just go away. It was a hurt that I could walk past things and it would trigger me. I could watch movies and it would make me cry. I could hear songs and it would make me cry. Things that used to make me happy were making me sad. So what does this have to do with going to church? Because I went through a season and God took me to his prayer and it says, you know, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Well, God's will is not being done on the earth because God is not actually ruling and reigning on the earth, right? People are on the earth at this present time and there's a principality of the air that is fighting you all the time. And what he is trying to do is destroy the truth from the truth. Again, I said he's trying to distort the truth with the truth. Because what I begin to realize is that when I went through that season of heaviness, when I went through this place where I said, God, I don't want to hear another message. I went to a doctor and I sat on the couch and I talked to him because you can be in a place where you got to get your mind right. And the reason why I'm saying this is because there's so many people that want to sit in church and their mind ain't right. And they think that their pastor can get them through it. Listen, your pastor can give, get you through it if he's equipped in those areas to deal with those mental issues. But God is saving your spirit, but you got to renew your mind and you got to get in a place where your mind could be renewed and you got to be not ashamed to say that I need help. If you need help, seek help. Go to the people that are trained to help you. And hopefully the person that is trained to help you is someone that is spiritual enough to also give you not just the medical side of it, but to give you the spiritual side of it. So when I was in my low place, God began to call me. And I will never forget this moment for as long as I live. I hadn't been in church for about a year. Now I would still listen to certain things, but I just didn't wanna be in that environment because I just was going through what I was going through. And I will never forget this, my daughter sat well, she actually stood up on the island. She was small and she just began to scream, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I'm thinking to myself, why are you screaming, Jesus? 
Why are you screaming hallelujah? Why are you screaming thank you, Jesus? And at that moment, when I had come downstairs and I heard her just saying hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And she just was just saying it over and over and over. It was as if God was personally calling me saying, I still love you. I still support you. And I'm still hearing here for you. And at that moment, I knew that this was a real thing. That even though I had left and turned my back on God, because I thought that that was going to solve my problem. God was the foundation because just like my daughter was sitting up there saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. It's because that's the example that she had been shown. That's what I used to play to her when she was a baby. That's what would happen when we go to church on Thursdays and things like that. And she began to get up there and just sing and, and just give praises to God. And she wanted to do, you know, a dance. And she, and she was like, turn on this song. And she wanted to dance. And it was as if God was calling me back home and I've shared this before that my son, he loved this song, Soul on Fire. Now my soul was not on fire. I hadn't been to a church in a very long time. So we would get in the car and my son would say, I wanna hear Soul on Fire. And we would listen to this song for like 30 minutes straight. My soul is on fire. And I was like, God, I don't wanna hear this song. And it was if, Everywhere I turn, God was calling me. And what, what I went through taught me that the mind will play tricks on you. And from that moment forward, after I went through this situation, and after I did all the stuff that I did, God was speaking to me through my children. God was ministering to me through the hugs and the kisses, but more importantly, through the words and the music that they were requesting. And I knew I was hurting. I knew I was struggling. I knew I was in an emotional place, but I was running from the place that could really help me. And I sat and talked to this man and you know what he told me? Sir, <laughs> you need to go to church and talk to God. And I'm thinking, what do I need to go to church and talk to God? This is why I'm here talking to you. And this man told me, you need to go talk to God. God was talking to me through my children. Then God talked to me through a physician. And it was at a point, that point that I said, God, we're going to have it out. You're going to have to do some explaining to me because I, I don't understand why you took my child from me. And in that moment, God told me to stop praying. There are some things you don't get answers for because you're not in a position to handle the answer that I'm going to give you. And God just really began to impress upon my heart and upon my spirit that I created you. I designed you. I know the path and the plan that I have for you. But at some point, you just got to trust me. So I returned back to the place that I had left. And I began to use the gift that God gave to me. And as I began to use the gift God gave me, it began to provide healing for my mind. It began to provide healing in my well-being. Because as we minister unto God, God really will minister unto us. And separating from God, for me, it's probably one of the worst decisions that I ever made because I was lonely and I felt by myself because you can be a house full of people and still alone. You could be eating at a dinner table and feel like no one else is at the table. You could be laying in the bed with someone 
and feel like they don't know you. Because there are some things that we're not always transparent enough. But I can tell you that the devil uses your shame. He uses your shame. And what he does is he does he 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 takes that and uses that to separate and push you away from those that love and from those that can support you. I just want to encourage you if that if you are hurting and if you are going through a mental battle, understand that the battleground is the mind and that the word says it is the engrafted word that can save your soul. To engraft something, you actually have to stitch it into that thing. So if you want the engrafted word to save your soul, you must get to a point where you're willing to really live this thing wholeheartedly. And I remember there are scriptures where it said that God would give you beauty for your ashes. I remember reading those scriptures. I remember reading Philippians 4, 6, think of those things that are lovely, pure. I remember all of that. And I remember these scriptures that the peace of God will surpass all of your understanding. I, I, I remember that and I would minister to people. But when it was my turn to go through my hurt, I didn't want any of that because I felt like, man, this ain't worth it. But I can tell you, and I posted this 10 years later, the journey of my hurt is a step that I now stand on. And it gives me the ability to be in places and spaces that I would have never been. That hurt allows me to write poetry on a level that I don't think that I would be able to express myself and feel the way because I know what it's like to not be able to sleep at night. I remember writing this and I never finished it, but it said, I lost someone very close to me. It hurt so bad, I could barely breathe. I couldn't sleep at night. I tossed and turned, because when I closed my eyes for their face, I yearned. I wanted their touch. I wanted to feel their voice. I wanted to see their eyes, because they were my first choice. Listen, I've been there, but I can tell you, when God speaks, he can use anything and anyone to speak to you. And when my daughter got up there and sung, and that became a seed that God was speaking, because I wasn't listening to anybody else. My pastor would call me and I just would see it and I would just hit, do not disturb. I, I, I don't, I don't want to hear from you. Just being honest. But when my son, my son began to want to hear soul on fire. And I just realized that was another seed. That was another thing that God was beginning to, to draw me back. And I remember going to my sister's church, House of Refuge. And I said, Sylvia, that's my sister. I, I, I just want to come sit. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to play any music. I don't want to do anything. I, I just, I just need to be ministered to. And I sat there for almost another year, just going to Bible study, just going to to to, to prayer. I just wanted to be in the, in the right environment because I was contemplating a lot of things in my mind. And it was if her husband, Pastor John Grimsley, was ministering to me every time I went and sat in that pew. So even though he was my family, I wasn't telling them what I was going through. I just said I needed to be in a place because I just I just sat on this man's couch. And now this man is telling me I need to go reconcile with God. And I'm thinking like, well, that was a waste of money. But I went and sat Wednesday after Wednesday. And God was speaking directly to me. And I didn't tell nobody what I was going through, but God was speaking directly to me. At my lowest point, my deepest thoughts and my innermost secrets, 
God used Pastor John to minister to me. And after about a year of uh, sitting under Pastor John Grimsley, I get a call from my own pastor. And I took the call. And she began to minister to me and talk about things that no one would know but God. So God used two pastors, Pastor John Grimsley and Pastor Susan Smith, to get me back going to church consistently. So I talk about why I go to church and why it's such a hard thing for me because I was raised in the church and I stopped going to church because of a traumatic experience that happened in my life. And you can, you, you, listen, pain is real and mental stress is real. It is really real. I'm not saying medicines don't work, but for me, I begin to pray and I begin to ask God, show me in your word, how do I recover from this? Because right now, I don't wanna serve you. I know that you've called me. I know I can write poetry. I, I, I know that I can play music, but I really don't wanna serve you. I'm just being point blank honest. I don't wanna serve you. And now I've done so much in this year of not going to church. You're calling me, but I don't feel worthy to now step foot in the church. And see, that's what the enemy does. What the enemy does is he gets you to a spot where you're hurting. And then you do stuff to ease the hurt. But then the ramification of doing the things that you use to ease the hurt, whatever that thing was, now becomes shame that you don't want to go back to the place that can heal you. The devil plays for keeps. I'm just, just trying to be transparent to you. So I go to church because I'm human and I've been through so much, so much. But when I was at my lowest, lowest point, God began to drop seeds to draw me back in. And I mentioned this in my book that I wrote about, I remember driving on the bridge and my thought said, drive off of this bridge. You can be re reunited with your son. I, I remember being in that spot where I said, drive off of this bridge. I remember sleeping and thoughts would say, go take that pain medication, just take the whole bottle. I remember the pressure. I remember that, but, but God, I don't have anything else to say but God. And and I begin to just gird myself up. And I, and I, I begin to say that, you know, God died on the cross way before I was born. And that his blood still can cover me. And I remember I just would get up and say, God, cover me with your blood. Cover me with your blood. Whatever I've done, God, I know your blood can fix it. And I remember my mom would just say, you just got to plead the blood. And I was like, well, I don't feel any different, but okay, I'm going to plead the blood over my mind. I'm going to plead the blood over my dreams. And I, I remember I would say like, God, you know, I need to sleep good tonight. I can't keep having these dreams. I can't keep having these thoughts. I can't stay in this place because if I stay in this place, I'm going to die. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to survive. I'm not. I'm not going to make it. And God met me where I was. So I'm grateful to my pastor. I'm, I'm grateful to Pastor John Grimsley. I'm, I'm grateful to Pastor Ray Smith, Pastor Susan Smith. I'm, I'm grateful to 
Bishop Taylor, because when I was in some dark moments, you know, it was the love of these people that got me through. There were other people that got me through, but I was hurting. And when I was hurting, God began to really just change my outlook on the way I thought about life. It really began to change the way I thought of, about life because this word became life to me. So I talk about why I go to church because there was times where I didn't want to go to church because the hurt was too great. But when I began to take my hurt and place it on the altar and I began to talk about God like this, this is what I'm feeling. And I need you to take this burden. I need you to take my inability to look in the mirror at myself because I see my child that I don't have. I, I can't fix that on my own. I need you to take the feeling of I can't watch a movie that deals with sickness of a child without crying. I, I, I I need you to deal with that. Here I am, this big, tough looking person on the outside, but on the inside, I'm a crying little baby because undealt with trauma, undealt with trauma will kill you. The enemy uses separation and isolation. And if he can separate you and isolate you, you can fall in a deep bout of depression. Don't, don't suffer in silence. There was nothing new underneath this sun. There is somebody that has been through what you're going through, but you gotta be bold enough and not ashamed to say that I'm hurting and that I need help. I've been in a position where I needed help, where I resisted the help, and God, you know, allowed my children to minister to me and I'm grateful because I set a, a foundation in my children for that to, to be able to happen because some people don't get a second chance. Some, some people don't um, make it back from being in, in, in really dark places. But I speak on why I go to church and I, I, I sound the alarm because God sound, sounded the alarm for me and really sent a lifeboat for me. And when I began to dig in this word and unravel these scriptures and say, God, this, this has to be more than just a dead letter. This got to be life. His word really became life to me. And his word really, really began to, it really gave me the ability to sleep <laughs> soundly at night. Yeah, really, that sounds crazy. But yeah, to be able to sleep soundly at night, to, to not to be on anything, it was really a blessing. So I go to church because I, I'm human and I hurt too. I have feelings. I have emotions. I I go through things like everybody else. So loving God and trying to serve God doesn't absolve you from life. You're going to go through life. You're going to go through things that um, everybody else goes through. But it's very important to be in an environment where people love you. It's very important to stay in an environment where people will care for you and, and, and check up for you. So don't, don't turn away people that really want to love on you. Because the battleground really is your mind. If you stay by yourself, if you stay isolation, in isolation, that is really an opportunity for your mind to play tricks on you. Because the body, the Bible says to be re renewed in the spirit of your mind. The devil is playing with your mind and he's playing with your emotions. So your mind really can play tricks on you. So you want to get a firm foundation. And I don't know any other better foundation than the word of God. It's just my honest opinion. So that's why I'm on over a hundred times talking about why I go to church, because there was time when I didn't go to church. There was a time I did everything that I knew I shouldn't have done. But if God can, you know, bring me back, I feel he can bring anybody back. So I believe it's my duty to share the love and to be as transparent as I can be about what God really can do. There is no situation that God can't send somebody your way to pull you through. But I just want to encourage you to fight. Fight. Fight.
fight, fight, fight. You got to fight for everything. You got to fight. Don't, if, if you come across this, don't cancel out your future because what has happened in your past. Don't cancel out your future because what has happened in your past. I know that your past can be painful. I know that triggers can make you relive things that you don't want to relive. But the only way to get rid of a thought is to replace it with another thought. And I'm telling you that God's thoughts are some of the most powerful thoughts and they can bring about the greatest release and relief that you ever can imagine. And because I know, because I have been there, I know it works. So I'm not talking about something that uh, I read in a book, that I haven't experienced, that I haven't gone through. But the God I serve really can heal the brokenhearted. But you got to be uh, transparent enough and admit that, you know, there is a problem. If there is a problem, go seek help. But don't end your life over what has happened in the past because your future is bright. Again, I, I told you this would be a different why I go to church, but that's this is really why I go to church because I, I've been through some heartache and some heartbreak but I'm still standing. And the only reason I'm standing is because of the God I know, the God I love, the God I serve. And if my wife is still here, I love you so much because my wife, you know, stood by me when I wasn't standing by her. When I was in an emotional stupor, she was there for me. So I promised to be there for her. It's very important to. Uh, it's 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 very important to uh, recognize the people that God sends your way that push you because they love you. It's very important to recognize the people that God sends your way that ask you questions because they love you. And I know that she loves me unequivocally. I know that she does. I know she loves me so much. So thank you. Sweetie, if you're still on here, I love you very much. And I, I appreciate all that you do and all that you have done for me. But this is Michael Gibson, and it's why I go to church, because I'm human. And I hurt, too. But every hurt that I've ever had in my life, God has placed people in my life to minister to me where I was and has brought me back from the brink of thinking that life wasn't worth living to now that I want to live life to the full. So if this message has blessed you, I ask that you share it out. But it's Michael Gibson, and it's why I go to church. Have a blessed day.